Welcome, everyone. I am so glad you are here today because we are going to talk about Mole National Park. Okay, so Mole National Park is the biggest tourist attraction in northern Ghana, hands down. And I am not saying that just because it's more than 1,800 square miles of like unspoiled, barely touched natural savanna landscape. It's got all sorts of animals, all sorts of plants, and the big attraction, of course, are the elephants. But what's even cooler is that you get to do, if you want, you can do a walking safari. Most safari experiences in Africa do not allow you to get out of the truck and go walking around. I know there's a couple here and there, but really, it's a very rare thing to be able to do a walking safari. And of course, that makes sense because they don't, they don't want you getting eaten by a lion or beat up by an ostrich. And so it makes sense. But mole doesn't actually have any big predators. Sometimes you'll hear a ranger tell a story of, oh yeah, I saw a leopard. And then you find out, yeah, it was somewhere really deep in the park like five or 10 years ago. So there might be leopards in the park, but no one ever sees them. So they don't have any big predators. So you get to do this cool walking safari. So I'm gonna take you through everything there, from the walking safari to the driving safaris to why it's good to stay at the motel to the si really cool side trip at Larabanga and all the things you should do. So this is everything you need to know about Mole National Park. Okay, so I mentioned the elephants and yes, they are the stars of Mole National Park and I will get to them. But I will tell you that I have been to Mole National Park three times over a 20 year span. And I'm telling you this because I want to give you just a little bit of history. My first time going to Mole National Park was in 2003. The town was pretty small when I was here the first time. And I mention that because the only bus to get to Mole was a public bus. And I didn't entirely understand what that meant. And it meant that I got a seat I got a little ticket with a little number on it. And so that was my seat. And all it was was an old school bus where they were squishing three people into a seat. But then what I didn't understand about it being a public bus was that also meant they were going to cram people into the aisles. And then all the way up to Mole, which at the time was a dirt road, uh, a really bumpy dirt road, but we would stop every 20 minutes and then they'd let people off at that village. But not only did they let people off, but then they had to uh, unpack the stuff and give them their stuff and then everyone got back on and it was this long tortuous bus ride to get out to Mole. I finally get out there, it's after dark and the only people left on the bus are people that work there. And it turned out that I was actually the only guest there at the time. When I first went, you actually had to be sort of a rugged traveler just to get to Mole National Park. Now it's not like that anymore, don't worry, it is all paved road. Uh, when I went uh, by private car, it was actually just a little bit over two hours. And there was like one little quarter mile stretch of uh, road that was being worked on. Other than that, the road was beautiful and perfect and it's all in good shape. So when you go now, it is a whole lot easier. Let me tell you a little bit about Mole Motel. There are two places to stay that are within the, the park. And the easiest and cheapest one is Mole Motel. Now, for what I usually like to pay for a hotel, it's actually kind of expensive. The prices on the rooms range at the current exchange rate from about 38 to $75. And the $75 are the chalets that actually overlook the watering hole. You literally have a little balcony and you're overlooking the watering hole. You're not hanging over the edge or anything, but you're overlooking the watering hole uh, where the animals gather. There is, however, a lookout area that you can watch uh, a viewpoint that you can do the same thing from if you don't spring for the chalet. It's just that when you have it first thing in the morning, you can go out and see what the animals are doing. Mole Motel is not fancy, but it's comfortable. I was a bad travel vlogger and I forgot to get pictures of the inside of the room at Mole Motel. Let me just tell you, they are perfectly fine rooms. They could use a little more lighting for my taste, but other than that, they are perfectly nice. Sorry, I forgot the pictures. So there are some really good reasons to stay at Mole Motel or Zena Lodge. I'm actually not sure what goes on at Zena Lodge and I'll tell you why in a minute. But Mole Motel, a lot of animals come up around the motel and you get to have a lot of 
interesting close encounters, not dangerous encounters, uh, uh, with animals just by walking around the hotel grounds. And that's why I didn't mind paying a little more than I usually pay for a hotel in Ghana. Zaina Lodge, on the other hand, is a luxury experience, and their rooms are $365 to $410 a night. Now, that includes food. That includes food. Uh, the 410 includes a safari drive as well. But that's definitely out of my price range. And that's why I don't know how many interactions they have over there. I know that they, I saw a video where it mentioned that people had to get an escort to go from their room to like the, the lodge because uh, they wanted to avoid unpleasant interactions. It's not like that at all at Molly Motel. Molly Motel is a little more Wild West. And I'll tell you some of that when I get to talking about the different animals, the individual animals, I'll tell you how they interact at the hotel. You really should start your trip with the walking safari. Yes, it's a short walk over to the ranger station where you have to be at seven in the morning. It is worth it. You want to take the morning safari walk because otherwise it can just get really hot. You want to be out there in the cool morning. Plus, it's a lot easier to spot elephants in the morning almost any time of year. The walking safari truly is a pretty hefty nature walk because you will go tromping through areas that don't have a path. They uh, follow the animals. If they get word that the elephants are over there or that uh, there's, you know, water buck over there, they will take you to them. They have a rough path that they, they kind of follow, but they definitely uh, will take you completely off-roading if that's the way uh, that makes sense to follow the animals. And uh, I will say, personally, I had two spots that I needed help in the safari walk. There wasn't a huge amount of help. I just needed a little bit of help. And if you want to watch the entire walking uh, safari walk experience, I have it on my second channel. I'll put a link in the description. But my entire safari walk experience is in there from beginning to end. Okay, so as I say, it's a, it's a hefty nature walk. And uh, the walk lasts about an hour to an hour and a half. And uh, you get to see, I mean, as I say, the chances of seeing elephants fairly up close while you're walking is, is really good uh, that early in the morning. And you could see monkeys, you can see baboons, you can see they have like three different kinds of antelope there. And uh, they are just, you know, and there's birds everywhere. and on the walk, if you have a good guide, uh, they will tell you about the various plants and the different things that they can do. As our ranger mentioned at the beginning of the walk, is you have to see the safari as the whole thing. It's not just the elephants, it's not just the animals. So you get to go tromping through nature and looking and everyone's watching and it's like, oh, look over there. Oh, look over there. And then like on one of the walks, uh, the one in 2019, I got to see a termite mound. The termite mound was like eight feet tall. It was huge and it's just amazing that it was that big and there's a natural salt lick where the animals come and it's like a natural rock salt lick thing and as i say and he was explaining the plants but as i say the cool thing is spotting all the animals uh, as you go and the the trickiest part well at the, the cool thing is at the end you get to the watering hole Okay, I think they all end at the watering hole and almost always they have it timed and they kind of know when the elephants are going to be there and you get to see the elephants playing at the watering hole. And sometimes they're really calm and sometimes they're playing and sometimes they're mating, um, or at least that's what it looked like in the water. And uh, so you get to kind of end with the, the elephants at the watering hole. So it's like this grand finale. Even if you didn't see elephants on your walk while you were getting there, you were probably going to see them at the watering hole. The tricky part comes when you have to finish because Mole Motel starts up here and everything is down from it. It's on like an escarpment and, and everything is down from it, which means you've got to go back up. And that watering hole is right below the motel. So you basically have to go up this fairly steep, uh, it's, it's not like a cliff, not like a rock climber's cliff or anything, but it's a fairly steep climb to, to get up there. And that's one of the points where I needed a little help because after an hour and a half of tromping through nature, uh, my legs were tired. Uh, I was done up and I knew, I told him right off the bat I was going to need help with that. And so uh, just be aware of that. You know, take water with you, stay hydrated. But uh, if you need help, tell them. 
uh, you know, if you're a good, strong, healthy young person, you're not going to have any troubles and you're going to go up the hill. And if you need help, ask for help. There is no problem with that. But yeah, the walking safaris are really cool because you're just right out there. And even though these are paths that have been used, they're not so well trodden and they're not paved and they're not, there's no man-made things involved here. It's, it is all truly nature. And that's the cool part about mole is there is nothing put on here. There are no uh, animals that are habituated or they haven't been imported because someone wanted to have giraffes at their uh, private reserve. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Tim and I did a safari in Senegal at Reserve de Bandia, and they, they brought in some animals. And the reserve was laid out so that you kind of were guaranteed some good viewing of just about anything and everything. And that was fine. Mole isn't like that. Mole is completely natural. There are just the parts that they've carved out for the, the motel and the ranger station and the crew, the, the staff quarters. And that's kind of as intrusive as it gets, as I say, and it's like 1800 square miles. So it's just this tiny piece where humans have just intruded a little bit and animals, the animals have run to the place for the most part. After the morning walking safari and you get a little time to recover, there is a late morning driving safari, but I don't think most people opt for that. I think most people wait till the afternoon and it's around 3 or 3.30 that you have to be over at the ranger station. And then they split the cost of the safari car between everyone who wants to go. I think it's around $40 for two hours. This has to be one of the most affordable safaris you will ever find. And then you pay the guide fee as a little separate and it's, it's still not that much. Uh, but so they split it up between everyone who wants to go. And if you're the only people who want to go, then you have to pay the, the whole thing. But hopefully you'll find other people to go with you. And then they basically go driving around, which gets you further out than the walking safari allows. And you don't get out of the car when you're doing the driving safari, not because it's any more dangerous. It's just uh, there's no purpose in it. The way the, the road is and the distance the animals are from the road, you're not going to see anything any better by getting out of the car to be really honest with you. But the driving safari is cool because you get to go further out and you'll see whole herds of antelope. And you might have seen that on your walking safari. That's entirely possible, but you might see a whole herd of antelope or even cooler is kind of they hear you coming and sometimes they, they take off and they'll go leaping across the road. I mean, these little antelope that just aren't that big. I mean, they're not that big, but they just go spring and it goes across the road. I mean, watching the antelope jump is just amazing. You might think, oh, that's an antelope, it's boring. Uh-uh, no, you watch them in motion and phew, they are amazing. The cob and the bushback uh, are the most common that you'll see on any of the safaris. The bushback has white markings on it. But then when you go on the driving safari, you might see the water buck and they're like a little bit bigger and a little bolder. And they're just really cool. Not to mention you can see baboons, you can see the, the green monkeys. There's actually some red monkeys. When I was there in 2003, they had just introduced a red monkey and her babies and the baboon troop had actually accepted them and taken them in. They were like refugees from a, a bad situation kind of thing. And now I understand we didn't see them this time. I understand that the red monkey population there is now, I think a couple dozen or more. But it's nice to see, it's nice to hear that the red monkeys are succeeding and uh, the fact that the baboon troop took them in. Actually, that was really cool. I got to tell you this. My first time in 2003, I was walking with the guide and we ended up walking right along with the baboon troop. Okay. And, you know, if you've seen the omen, that's a little scary. <laughs> but uh, no, we were walking right along with the baboon troop and they just allowed us in. Of course, then in 2019, uh, the guy, the ranger, referred to the baboons as criminals, and he was very right about that. And I have a story about that one, too. One of the nice things about Mole Motel is it has a nice outdoor area where they have a pool if you do want to swim. But even beyond that is this wonderful, gorgeous scenery that just looks out over the park. And it is absolutely gorgeous. But where it starts to get really interesting is when the various animals start showing up. So warthogs. I can almost guarantee you are going to see warthogs on your safaris. They are just around everywhere. In fact, you might see the warthogs 
going through the trash at the ranger station. You might see the warthog on the lawn in front of your, uh, your hotel room. And I say that because that's when this little interaction happened. I saw the warthog from inside the room and I went out to try and get some footage of it. Oh, no, oh, come here. I'm happy to say hi. I'm not gonna chase you away. Even if you encountered one close up, you really don't have to worry about it. Don't be stupid about it. Don't pick on it. Don't, don't do things to agitate it. But uh, the, the warthogs, uh, because they interact up near the things, they get chased off a little, you know, hey, go away, stop knocking over trash cans. And, uh, but you don't have to worry about encountering a warthog. And actually, they're really cool up close. And then you have the baboons. The baboons are cool in that they're entertaining. And they too will go through the trash cans at uh, the ranger station or anywhere they can. But they will also, they will also come right up into the hotel area and do things like this. You could almost see him watching them and calculating, are they gonna chase me off or am I gonna get a chance to do this? And the other thing that they always forget to tell you or they neglect to tell you, when you check in, they should be telling everyone this, is you need to lock your doors, uh, even if you are inside the room, because the baboons will come around and test the doorknobs. I mean, I am not kidding. They will test the door locks and if it's unlocked, they will let themselves in and start looking for snacks. That actually happened to us. Uh, when I was out on the walking safari, this is in 2019, when I was out on the walking safari, Tim stayed asleep in the room because he, he just, there was no way he could do the walking safari. He was mostly blind and there was no way he could do it. So he's sleeping and because I had the key, I hadn't locked the door. And so a baboon came in, it was a female baboon, she came in and we had snacks, of course. You know, you always have snacks when you travel, right? And she found the, some cookies. She pulled the, the snack bag down and then she had a, a pack of cookies and she had opened them like she had sliced it with her, her claw, her nail. And she had, must have just been sitting there eating them. And at some point, someone figured out that she was in there and they came in and chased her out. Tim woke up groggily and he thought like, someone from the cleaning crew was there and that they had their dog with them. But as I say, he was mostly blind and just waking up. And so that's what he thought of the baboon. And then I came back from uh, the walking safari and I'm like, what's this mess? You know, and I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that he spilled stuff and didn't pick it up or something like that. And then he told me the story of the baboon that came in and stole our cookies. And the thing is, is, as I said, we found the pack that she had opened and she had opened it really neatly. And I think she was just sitting there having, wishing she had some tea, you know? Uh, so the baboons will break into your room and you might think it's cute, but it's actually, I wouldn't want to have that happen uh, if possible. The female was probably easy to chase out in that, but if you got like an adolescent male, they might get uh, a little aggressive. And because they do have, you know, sharp, sharp, uh, I don't know if they're nails or claws or whatever, and they do have teeth. They do have significant teeth. Uh, I wouldn't want to have to chase a baboon away if I didn't have to. Let's put it that way. Uh, so definitely, if you go to Mole Motel, lock your doors, even if you're in the room. And you will hear, sometimes you'll, you'll hear someone at the door and you'll say, who's there? Who's there? And no one will answer. It's the baboons checking. And at least in our room, you could actually see them. If you went into the bathroom, you could see who was at the door. And we definitely saw a few times that there were baboons at the door trying to get in. So that's why the ranger that uh, we had in 2019 called the baboons criminals. Okay, so now for the elephants. I've already shown you the elephants that you might see on your walk and the one, you know, you see them at the watering hole. But this is another thing where being at the motel has its surprises. I was sitting relaxing after breakfast and someone said, oh, there's an elephant near the, near the motel. And there was a, off the breakfast area, there was a bank of rooms 
like four or five rooms over that way. And so I went over to see, and sure enough, there was an elephant coming up out of the, the, the brush. And so I was looking, and they were over in the distance away. But I went over to where those rooms were because there was a sturdy, sturdy railing. And I figured if I'm behind the railing, uh, I'm safe. Cause, and it was still at least 30 meters uh, to the elephant. Um, but then two more elephants came up. Okay, and those, they all just sat there eating and I was filming and filming and filming and they didn't mind one bit. In fact, the, one of the rooms behind me, the air conditioner turned on and I'm like, oh, someone's in there. And they don't even know they have elephants in their backyard. So I knocked on the, the door, because um, that's actually the back door for their rooms. And I knocked on the door and said, hey, you got elephants back here. And they're like, what are you, what's going on? And I was like, you got elephants. And they came out and did elephant selfies and, and all that thing. And yeah, and I followed them around to the other side just to see, and then, and then they moseyed on. But see, that's the thing. The animals know this is their space. They know they're protected. They know that no human is going to hurt them. So they act for them. They act completely naturally. They do what they want to do. The mullein elephants have a very good reputation for not being really aggressive. It doesn't mean some can't get a little cantankerous now and then. In fact, the ones you see up by the motel are always the males. The females are off in another area and uh, they, they avoid people. And also you'll never see the real babies. You'll sometimes see like smaller elephants that I'm sure are like adolescents, uh, but uh, you'll never see the small babies because they're with the mothers and the mothers pretty much only allow the, the guys to come around when it's time to mate. Oh, and I should tell you, there are options for camping. If you want to camp, uh, they have a campsite and you can actually stay overnight in a place where they have a, an observation deck for hippos. I don't know if you really get to see the hippos or if it's more about hearing them, but they're more active at night and you get to experience hippos. If you want to go sleep in a tree in the jungle, you can arrange that. But you will need some camping gear for that one. So uh, be aware of that. Um, if you want to do some drive deeper in the park, and uh, go further. You can, you just have to be willing to pay for it and you need to arrange it with the rangers. So besides the uh, things I've told you about here, which are the most common ones, what pretty much everyone does, there are even more options for going deeper and seeing more of the park and more animals if you want to take them. By the way, I do have a full blog post write-up on our 2019 Mole visit on the website, which I'll put a link in the description if you want to take a look at that. The other thing you want to do when you go to Mole National Park is leave yourself a couple of hours to do the tour at Larabanga. Larabanga is the town that is sort of the main town on the main road before you go off to get to the Mole National Park entrance. Larabanga's two sites are the Mud and Stick Mosque and the Mystic Stone. It doesn't matter which order you see them in, but their stories do tie together, so you want to see them both. The mosque is actually built in a Sudanese style, and so you don't see a whole bunch of them in this area. Okay? So it is a unique construction in the first place, and no, unless you are Muslim, you are not going to be allowed inside. So you take all your pictures from the outside. But the guides here will enlighten you as to the whole story of the mosque, how it was founded, how the, the guy who found it had this vision, and uh, he threw a spear and it landed in the spot where the mosque was supposed to be, and there's a whole legend behind it. And then you go over to the Mystic Stone. My memories of the Mystic Stone are kind of cool because when I first went there, there was no wall around it. Okay, it was just the stone and it was on this pillar. Even the pillar they've kind of reinforced now just for safety. And they've built a, a thing around it. But the mystic stone is, if I'm not mistaken, it's where the guy threw the spear from. I have to, to review my notes, but it's where the guy threw the spear from. And it has this whole legend of, I think it was the British came through and they wanted to put a road in and they, they moved the stone out of the way and the next day it was back. And they moved it further away and the next day it came back. And it basically scared the crap out of everybody. And so they built the road in a whole nother place. 
Okay, that's the outline of the story, but the storytellers definitely tell it much better. And so you get this great legend of these, these two uh, places. And one of the really fun things when you travel in Africa is almost everything has a story. And there's almost always people that are just storytellers waiting to tell you the story. And yes, you should tip them. And yes, there's a small fee for going in to, to see the things. A few dollars here and a few dollars there. It's well worth it to get the story told to you and to be able to just go see these really cool sites. So at most, it takes one to two hours uh, in Larabanga. And it is definitely a side trip you should do if you're at Moli National Park because it's right there and it's really cool and you are not going to find it anywhere else. So from awesome trekking safaris to criminal baboons and cool elephants and legendary mud and stick mosques and mystic stones, this is the kind of experience you can expect when you visit Mole National Park. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I really hope you enjoy it when you get there and go for yourself because I hope you do and I will see you next time.